putting that all together. But football season is upon us. I mean, it's a lot going on as far as that goes. Actually, we'll, we'll talk about football right now before we really delve into the soccer and the college football and then into the Olympics. Yeah, I've seen a lot. Of, Josh Allen signed his long-term contract with Buffalo. Not a surprise. It's really to the point where Buffalo was smart with that because you're going to see the deal Lamar Jackson gets and even Baker Mayfield. I think Josh Allen is the best of those guys in that draft class that's up for an extension, yet he may sign for the least because I'm sure Lamar's agents and Baker's agents are going to look at them and have arguments of that they're better than Josh Allen. Well, Lamar Jackson, hey, I was an NFL MVP, unanimous MVP. I've led my team to multiple playoff appearances, something that more pair of playoff appearances than Josh Allen has done. If you're Baker Mayfield, you can go to Cleveland and say, look, the, the Browns have been a deplorable franchise for decades. I've come here. Not only have we made the playoffs for the first time in 20 years, we won a playoff game at Pittsburgh, of all places, our big rival. So I have that over Josh Allen. So those two contracts are going to be probably even more than, than Allen. So that was smart on Buffalo's part to make that the sign that deal and get it done and yes it averages i think 41 million dollars a year that's how it ends up uh, being but that's going to be and it's crazy to say this i know and every time we talk professional sports and you talk about this money it really is monopoly money a 41 dollars is going to be 41 million dollars a year might be cheap compared to what you see and Dax and accept Dak Prescott. He gets seventy plus million dollars this year because it's a front loaded deal. If you look at his average, you see Mahomes, his extension is about to kick in, I think, after this year. And you look at that money, forty plus million a year for a top five, top ten quarterback in the NFL might not be too much money. And you look at it now and it's like, yeah, it's a large amount. But I think if you look at the market and how that's gonna go down. I don't think that's a really offensive number. That's just the way it's set up. And I do have to bring up as well, just the NFL, and we said it before, and it's going to continue on, I think, over the next few weeks, the the dealing with COVID and dealing with the the with the pandemic. And you have guys like Lamar Jackson. We just mentioned Lamar Jackson, so we'll bring him up. He has, I think he's just getting out of quarantine or with the protocols. You know, with the with COVID, he's tested positive during training camp for a second time. And I believe he is not vaccinated because we know guys like Cole Beasley, the wide receiver for the Buffalo Bills and Kirk Cousins for the Minnesota Vikings have been very expressive about them not being vaccinated. And I mean, it's private, but if you make it public and you announce it, then you know we could talk about it. But those guys are not vaccinated. And going through all of that but Lamar Jackson he's he's been under the the protocol and he's coming back but I think you're getting to the point and now there're no games being played preseason games I don't really consider though I mean they're pre they matter but if a guy sits out they're half these guys are going to sit out anyway of these preseason games but I think once you get to the regular season you're going to have a good player whether it's a Cousins or a Beasley or Lamar Jackson that are not vaccinated test positive, they're going to miss a game that week. And I think the problem is, it's not necessarily those guys that, and I'm not judging if you get the vaccine or not, I lean towards getting the vaccine and, and taking care of the health in that way. But it's your body, you're going to do what you have to do or do what you want to do. But if you're going to be under, if you're not going to be vaccinated, you're going to have to be under more intense scrutiny and more uh, you have to go through more as far as shooting yourself not only from spreading it to others but then you receiving or getting getting covid because what's going to happen too and it's, the workplace it relates to this as well the last thing you want to do is have someone get covid become really sick and, or you know have their health altered and then come back to you and say you did not provide me with a good work environment. You did not protect me. And then legally and financially, you come back at me. And I think that's what's happening. These teams are trying to protect themselves. And we use Cousins because he's been very vocal about it. If he contracts COVID, and we're not wishing this on anybody, 
but he contracts COVID. He gets really sick and it alters his, his health and his lifestyle and him able to play. And he cannot play up to his ability. He's, he could turn around and come back at the Vikings and say, you did not provide me X, Y, and Z. Now my health is altered. You owe me compensation. That's where these teams are being very protective and very, you have to be very, they're very concerned about it. And furthermore, if I'm a, a player that you put me, if I'm a Vikings player and you put me next to Kirk Cousins and I can track COVID and bad things happen, you can come around with the same thing. So that's the thing that the league has, been, has to be very careful about of how they handle this. But I think the other thing they have to handle or be careful about is the players that are vaccinated and still could track COVID, which can happen, especially in football. You, if you're listening to this, you know how football is. It's very close quarters. And I could be vaccinated and, and take my, done my, my proper steps, but I can track COVID. Yeah, I still, have to, I still have to sit out games. I still cannot participate in things. I did what I was, quote unquote, supposed to do. So at least have to figure all of that out. And it's going to be a very uh, interesting mo- situation to see how, how that all works out. And I'm watching one of the sports stations now with Dak Prescott with his shoulder injury. I think the fact that he signed that big extension this offseason, obviously he's going to be the highest paid guy in the NFL at $70 plus million this year. I think you're seeing a lot of caution on the Cowboys' part, which is understandable. And I think also it's preseason and training camp. A lot of guys get arm fatigue. They, I know they do all their drills and their training in the off season, but now they're actually in camp having to do practices and strains happen and everything like that because it's not the same as being on a practice field doing actual football activities. And I think with him, yeah, there's a shoulder issue. And I think if they have a few weeks to go because he's not going to play in the preseason. I don't think he's going to play that much anyway. So you can send him out in the preseason. But shoulders are very tricky, especially for a quarterback, because that's what you do. And the fact that they're consulting the Texas Rangers doctors with it, which is smart because obviously they, they deal with shoulder injuries a little more extensively than football players as far as throwing because every baseball player throws the ball, so they deal with it a lot more often. But yeah, I don't necessarily be concerned. I think there should be a fair amount of wait and see with it. And it's almost to the point where if he has to sit out some regular season games, if it's good for the sake of the long term, I think you may have to do that. And I also believe that that division is so bad. And trust me, I'm a New York Giants supporter, so I don't like talking about the Giants in a bad way, but that's a bad division. I, the Cowboys are the favorite to win it, without question. I mean, I know people say Washington and maybe the Giants, and Philadelphia is probably in the last place. But seven, eight wins, well, we have a 17-game season. Well, I still say maybe seven or eight wins can win that division. So if Prescott has to sit out a game or two in the regular season, to get himself right for the final 14 or 15 games, then I think you may have to consider that if you're Dallas. Uh, But training camp is going on and all those activities are taking place. So we'll be keeping track of that as it rolls along. Oh, and one more thing before we get to the Atlanta United and everything going on there. Don't look at these practices as the gospel for how your season is going to go. We talked about it on the last show, and I reiterated again using two rookie quarterbacks coming into the league. We've heard all the Trey Lance talk about how he's looked spectacular in practice, and he's dominating drills, and he looks like the, the next great future quarterback. And he may be all of that stuff, but you have to be very cautious with these practices. They're scripted. I know they say the defense knows what's coming and or they may not know what's coming. They try to do all that stuff. But you're playing against your your teammates. You're not allowed to be touched as a quarterback. And that rule is emphasized very strongly. See Daniel Jones last week in that practice with the Giants and that scrum and Joe Judge losing his mind and making them do calisthenics like they're high schoolers. So you can't touch the quarterback. 
you're not doing padded practice. You have padded practices, quote unquote. You're not facing opposition. It's, I know they try to make it full speed, but it's not 100% full speed. Be very careful with these reports coming out of camp. You, and obviously the 49ers are going to, and the media, it trickles down to them. It's not the media's fault. I'm, I'm usually critical of media, but this time I'm not necessarily. But these coaches and their sources are going to say he looks really good. He looks great because they want to give him confidence. They want him to be, you know, have have some good energy coming into the regular season. If they're going to say that for his future, if they come in and say, oh, he, he, he's dropped, he's under throwing passes. He's not doesn't know what the play is. He's bad with audibles. How, who's that benefit? Uh, uh, that benefits nobody. So you're not going to see that come out of the training camp as far as the reports go. So I don't think that's going to be a, so be careful with that. On the other end of things, I saw the reports of Zach Wilson, the New York Jets quarterback, him having a, a rough first practice. I did not see the practice. I think it was public, but, or it may, but the point is that's his very first, he's still in his first training camp. He has been maybe in there a week or two. I know they do some mini camp stuff and whatever, Look, don't ride the guy off and saying he's going to have a terrible career because he may have not had the best showing in their first drill, first few drills, whether they're public or private. Be very careful with that. I think with that situation, wait till you see some preseason games because then you're facing opposition and it's not the regular season necessarily, but at least you're in full pads in a game situation against an opponent. Look at that stuff, and same thing with Trey Lance. Then if you look at a few of those games, now you can't go too crazy with that as well, good or bad, but I'll look at those, and that will give me a better picture of what's going on with the quarterback. But the fact that the E's may have a not-so-great session that they do in public, please, you can save that uh, for another day. So those are my thoughts on the NFL and everything that's going on there with that.